Good evening, everybody, and welcome to CWC podcast number two, show number two. Uh, thank you to everybody who tuned into the first show. Uh, we're starting to pick up some traction. I think hey, for me, 120 views is a lot. So I'll take that all day. I've, I've had videos out there for two years that had eight views. So <laughs> so I'll take 120 for me is uh, is quite enough for now. So thank you to everybody who's engaged with us so far. Uh, we look forward to more engagement yeah. on that particular video. That's the one that's going to be a three-part series. So we are going to return to that topic because we're going to have guests that are, we have people lining up there. They're blowing up the phones. Can I get on the show? So uh, we're going to come back to that topic. It's going to be yeah. a lot of fun and a learning experience for all of us. So with that being said, show number two, the topic is going to be universal energy. Now, this is something that this is not really my topic. This is my sister's topic. She knows a lot more about this universal <laughs> Uh, energy, spiritual energy, universal law, right? Yes. Um, and she's been studying this stuff probably, I don't know, what, how many years? Uh, for, and it, well, I started reading books and, and getting into manifestation techniques and stuff when, uh, right after Skyla was born, I started reading up on Wow. It. Yeah. Right. I, I didn't know you were doing it that long. Yeah. Um, I found, um, I saw someone introduced me to the secret. He said, Amina, you need to, you need to see something because mm -hmm. I was quite negative and, um, I didn't know it. Most people don't know that they're negative, uh, but I was quite negative. I complained a lot and, um, I didn't realize it, but he said, you know, you need to, you need to see something. And he gave me the movie, The Secret. So I watched it and it had Wayne Dyer and, um, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. It's a good way to get started, to get introduced oh, into. Do you know Wayne Dyer and Abraham Hicks and no. um, Dr. Joe Dispenza was in it? Oh, the, and, oh wow. So I, him, I do know. Yeah, it was pretty profound. Um, it's uh, by Rhonda Bryan. Yeah, I think that's her name. And so then I, I watched the movie and I read the book. And then they have a uh, follow-up, um, The Magic. I read that. And then I just really was kind of captivated This was all by when Skyla was born? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. actually, the uh, the secret I saw before was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skyla was a baby. Skyla wow. was a baby, and um, it just kind of evolved. I was quite interested in it, and um, said, you know what? There's more books. So I was downloading them on my Kindle, and I was reading mm. these manifestation oh, the books. We had those. Um, so it's been a, a long kind of road, but in the last four years, when I decided it was time to heal my body, um. It, it, I needed to learn something new. I had to figure something out because I was on the pharmaceutical hamster wheel. Uh, they were Don't giving me, that. I was polypharmacied. I had way too many pills. They were cutting me open and operating on me and it wasn't working. I was still very sick and there was some, I had to figure something else out. So uh, this is kind of how all that really happened. I had to become another person. And the only way that you can create another reality, you have to change completely. So it wasn't just learning about new food, but I had to change everything that I was consuming. Mm -hmm. My food, my drink, my, my entertainment, uh, entertainment, my consumption, what I'm listening to, all of your fuel kind of has to change. And the people, your environment is very important. Your environment has to change. So that includes you know, toxic people, you have to let them go, you know? So Absolutely. that's kind of, so the last four or five years is when I got really serious because I wanted to heal. So I, I mentioned in one of the previous videos, my sister was very sick for a long time, uh, in and out of the hospital, uh, constantly, uh, digestional issues, all kinds of issues all the time, uh, where it got exhausting for her, but exhausting for everybody. Like the whole family was like, it's all, I mean, it's in the hospital again. <laughs> Like it was always a drag on everybody because we were so used to going up there to see her. Yeah. It was just kind of normal. It became normal at, at a certain point. But eventually, yeah. and it started, sounds like it started right around the time that you had Skyla. She had a epiphany that I need to do something. I need to change. I need to broaden my spectrum of belief because what I'm believing right now has got me in this particular situation and it's not working. The pharmaceuticals aren't working. The doctors aren't, they're, the stuff they're telling me to do isn't working. Yeah. So she found a need to, to change everything, and it's led her to this path of uh, universal energy and spiritual law and all these things. is a very broad topic, but we're going to dissect it, um, and we're going to kind of put it on the back of uh, 
coping with life's disappointments. How do we do that? Um, we've all dealt with setbacks, whether you lost a job, went through a breakup, um, got into a fight with somebody, a good friend, who knows, lost a good friend. Uh, that's happened to a lot of people in the last two years, right? Yeah. Um, so how do we cope with those things? How do we, how do we, um, and, and does the universe decide like who has the good fortune and who doesn't have the good fortune? Because I'm sure you've heard of people. We've all worked with people that, or know people that you hear, nothing good ever happens to me. Or why does this always keep happening to me? Yeah. Why does it always keep happening? And nothing good. Why am I going to play the lotto? I don't win. I never win anything. I've, I have never won a raffle in my life. Why would I play the lotto? Right. And there's, we, I think we've probably all been guilty of that at some time. Yeah. But, and then you, you have people say, man, this person is just so lucky. Mm. Like they just, man, this guy goes to the blackjack table and I don't know. He's, he's always winning. It doesn't make any sense. He's the luckiest guy I know. Yeah. Right. He believes in his luck. He actually believes in his luck. He actually believes that he's going to win. Yeah. He, he's, he's sure of it. And that, and that's what, when we talk about you know, what I, my limited understanding of it so far, because I've only been looking at this for probably like the last, you know, probably six to eight months. Um, I started um, coming across other YouTubers who were yeah. kind of bleeding into the YouTubers that she was listening to. So then uh, we started kind of sharing it. it as like, hey, this person brought up this person's name or this person brought up that person's name. And we started seeing that a lot of the stuff that we were watching, even though most of my stuff start off in like the more of the manosphere space. She was more in the spiritual energy space, but it, there's some overlap there. And we started seeing that. And that's kind of how I became more curious about it. And that leads into a good segue because speaking of life disappointments, I went through a bad disappointment like maybe three, two, three weeks ago. Bad. I did all the great planning, had everything lined up, trip planned, everything beautiful. What happens? It's a yeah. catastrophe. Flight gets canceled. Never get where I'm supposed to go. They lose my bags. They send my bags to three different states before I got it back. That's not a joke. It was a nightmare. It's not a joke. <laughs> my bag my bag went to three different states. I was tracking my bag, and they were showing your bags in Charlotte, North Carolina. Your bag's in Houston. I'm like, what is going on? Your bag's got to go on a vacation. <laughs> but but I, you did not. <laughs> I'm sitting here on the phone with customer service. I didn't get to go anywhere. Yeah. I didn't get to go anywhere. I was sitting here like, can I at least get my bag back? Oh, your bag's in Houston. Great. Mm -hmm. So I was very frustrated, right? Obviously, I had to kind of give my sister a phone call and say, hey, what do I tell myself to pull myself out of this rut that I'm in? Because for like a day and a half, I was just in a rut. I'm yeah. sitting in my room. I'm down. I'm upset. I'm mad at the world. I'm like, what did I do mad wrong? about it. What did I do? I planned everything out right. Why did this happen? This doesn't make any sense. And you start beating yourself up. Should I left another weekend? You start, we start questioning. And my sister says something key to me. She said, you're taking score too soon. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What you're taking score too soon. You're judging the situation. What does that mean? Well, it just happened. And you don't even have hindsight yet. You, how can you figure out why this happened? What did I do wrong? You're already condemning yourself. Mm -hmm. For, hold on a minute. Wait, let get some hindsight first. Let things play out. You will be able to, this always happens to us. We're always able to tell why we went through something bad. We like to call it bad mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Um, by the way, everything is neutral until you label it. Everything is just is. Now, what does that mean? Because, uh, because to a lot of people in the audience, that doesn't make any sense, right? Like, everything's well wait a minute no if i get into a car accident it's bad right like that's that's what i'm thinking right that's in that moment it may feel bad but like did you get a new car out of it did your car get paid right. off did you end up getting another car did it you know hopefully nobody got hurt but mm -hmm. there's usually something that unravels in there that tells you why it happened and it's mm -hmm. usually something for your good or did you meet somebody at the accident site that became a friend later on right or had a connection for you to get a job or it's usually something that is mm. wrapped up in there that is for your benefit so taking score too soon so be patient you right? have to be patient like if when you deal with a setback give it time give give the universe time to process it for you if you jump to a conclusion that and oh. A negative conclusion. It's usually a negative conclusion. You're Why like, do we do that though? Why do we always jump to the negative conclusion first? It's 
human nature, it's natural for our minds to go to the negative first. That's the, mm. they would say it's the caveman brain that, that keeps Slide you uh, safe. Mm-hmm. It's the negative nature. Don't go that way. That's dangerous. Don't go over there. Stay inside the cave. Like I always tell Skylar about the movie, The Cruise. Because they lived in the cave. Them. Oh, it's, it's such a good cartoon. But um, he kept them in the cave. He was keeping them safe. That's what your your brain does. Your brain is designed to keep you safe. Like nobody wants to work out. Your brain will tell you, oh, just stay in bed. It feels so good. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, it'll talk you out of things that are hard or difficult or tiring. Or you, or you can make up a lot of excuses why you don't want to go. Mm-hmm. But once you do it, if you make yourself do it, it's a good thing. So your brain is just a shot, um, designed to keep you safe. So it'll talk you, um, and it sounds negative. It'll give you all the negative reasons yeah, why. Everything you that go. everything that I heard those two days was it was all negative. I couldn't I couldn't convince myself, and I was trying because some of this stuff I know. So I was trying to talk myself out of feeling the way that I felt, but I couldn't shake it. Like it was like everywhere I would turn, it would be there. I would take a shower, it would be there. I'd be thinking, man, I'm supposed to be on the beach right now. Like it was just, it just wouldn't go away. Yeah. And, and, and I had a couple of days off still before I had to go back to work. So I'm like, I, I got all this time to think about what I didn't get to do. Right. So and, now you're beating the drum of the negativity yeah. of, because you're harping on it and you're making yourself, you're now you've got momentum in a negative direction. And once you start thinking a thought mm-hmm. after Abraham Hicks says after 17 seconds, that thought grabs onto another thought, just like it. So now you have momentum. So you go from one bad thought to another bad thought. Your brain will reach back into its memory bank and find something that happened in the past that matches what's happening now. Now you have all these scenarios playing in your head. Scenarios. Yeah. And now you've got momentum and now you're just on a negative track. And And before you know it, by the time you're done doing all of that, now you're getting into the end of the weekend. Now it's Sunday. Now you're annoyed that you have to go to work on Monday. Now that now that heightens your chances of going to work with a chip on your shoulder on Monday, Monday and then having a bad Monday. <laughs> and now you've created a cascading effect because now you may now you may have another bad week because of what you didn't control up here uh, during that initial disappointment. Or you jumped to conclusions and you started <laughs> or you started beating the, the drum of what was. Yeah. And that, that's one thing you say to me a lot when we talk on the phone is you say, stop beating the drum of what was, because now this is a new moment. Now, now, right now. Yes. For th- this was moment here, here, here. This is a new moment now. You're dragging that into your now and you're just carrying it with you and mm-hmm. it's messing up your present moment and possibly your tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So you have to nip it in the bud. So with awareness of a thing, you can change it. So once you have awareness of what you're doing, take control over it and tell your mind, no, I'm in control. We're going to stop this now. That's enough already. Right. So now that we and I think that a lot of you probably could relate to, you know, we again, because we've all had disappointments. Right. Big ones, small ones. Uh, our little our, our kid didn't make the, the cut on the basketball team or, or something like that. Right. And then you feel that disappointment for your kid. And then you're trying to rationalize, like, why did this happen? Give it time to find out what happened, because there may be a hidden meaning somewhere within Let it that. process. Let it process. Yeah, like a computer. Let it process. And then you can go back and read the program and see what happened. And then you'll have more awareness of it. So we're going to segue into the 12 laws of the universe. Now, I, I do not. I am not very familiar with these. This is my sister's content, but she's going to. I'm going well, to share. What was the first question on the bullet points again? Uh, what did you say? Uh, the first oh. question on the bullet point is, um, OK, does the universe decide? Who has good fortune and who doesn't? I think that was the first thing that we asked. And you kind of answered that because uh, we just did it with the with the gambling analogy, right? The guy who is skipping through the casino with chips in his pocket because he knew he was going to win at that craps table. Or, he, yeah. or you. meanwhile, you've been in there all weekend and you can't win anything. You're like Chevy Chase on the Vegas vacation. <laughs> That's a and he could not win no matter what he did because he was chasing it. He was chasing it and it will always run from you when you do that. Yeah. Um, you create your fortune. You're, you have a say so. You're, you're part of. So that, does the that making. explain? Does that explain? Because the people who, and we're going to give you some examples of people who have 
willed themselves into good fortune, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and and it's not it's not a coincidence that these people sometimes like I, I forgot the gentleman's name. Who's the guy that you told me that he's won the lottery multiple times? Mark Houghton. Mark Houghton. I follow him on YouTube. He's excellent. If you want to learn about quantum physics, quantum theory, um, manifesting with quantum physics, Mark Houghton. He's awesome. Yeah, apparently, this guy. I don't know much about him, but apparently, he's won the lottery. He's made a habit of winning the he lottery. He was in Florida. Oh wow! Yeah, he lives in Miami. I think. I think it's well, Miami. Imagine that. Yeah. I gotta ask Grover if he knows who he he's is. Awesome. He probably, oh yeah, I know him. He lives down the block. <laughs> um, so interesting because I'm I'm learning a lot of the stuff. The universe with you is guys. impartial. God is impartial. Mm-hmm. Um, so you get whatever you where energy goes, where focus, wherever you're focusing. So whatever you're focusing on, if you are negative self talk and talking crap about your friends and all of these things, you're in a negative space mm-hmm. and you're creating a negative reality. Now, this is why, isn't this why we should change our surroundings? So, um, a lot of my friends who I talk to a lot, they'll tell you, um, I went through a point in life where I had to kind of like purge people from my circle, people that I were, you know, kind of hanging around a lot. You you definitely, (laughs) you, you, and your circle was much bigger than mine. Believe me. Um, my, my, my circle's pretty small, but even within that, um, there were just people that I felt like when I would talk to them it was kind of like the same harping story every time. Like there was not, and I actually want to share a slide with you. Um, and this, uh, bear with us on the slide sharing. This is the first time that we have tried this. So we are going to see how it comes out on the finished product. Um, but I actually want to share with you first the, um, the emotional guidance scale, it's called. Um, the vibrational scale. The vibrational scale, sorry. Vibrational scale. So if you, you should be seeing this on your screen. Um, I believe, like if we look at this particular slide, I think this is very telling of what uh, is wrong with society. <laughs> so if, if you look at this vibrational scale, low vibration, hatred, fear, sadness, jealousy, worry, anxiety. But look at as you started to rise up, how it changes. So fear and hatred are very at the bottom in order to, you have to go through each stage. Mm-hmm. You just can't jump. You know, you, you kind of feel here. Then you have to have a little anxiety, a little worry, and then a little apathy and annoyance is a little bit less. And then you start to feel hopeful. But right? so, but, but can you stay here? Like if I get, if I go through this, can I stay here? Is it sure. the people who have the good fortune happening to them all the time? Is it because they are always operating in this area? Um, majority of the time, not everyone can, I don't know, maybe the monks can stay there, okay. but us humans, we, they're human too, but you know, us in a society, we have so many things bouncing off of us all the time that, um, of course you can have anxiety and worry and stuff like that. Okay. So I shared that slide. Hopefully it came through clean again. We're, uh, (laughs) some of this stuff we're going to have to clean up, but we're doing well, I think in our empathy, but, uh, so, so it's funny, but because that scale, when I looked at it, it kind of gave me, I mean, it made sense to me just looking at it. If you guys are okay. When you come home at night, I don't watch any mainstream media television. I watch very little mainstream media um, other than live sports. I quit watching the news when I decided I wanted to get healthy, when I wanted to heal. And that was one of the things that a lot of these people talk about that, you know, bringing in negativity through your ears, listening and watching the news Mm -hmm. around negative people. Your environment, if it's negative, all those things I had to purge. I had to, I had to start over. I had to do new things because I wanted to be a new person. Which, sorry, I got off topic before, but when I was talking about the, it's the same analogy here. Uh, the friends that I had to kind of distance myself from because they were that constant drumbeat of negativity. Like it was always like if I had something positive or optimistic to say, you had that one person who always said, "Oh, but what if you do that? Then then this happens." I'm sure you all have a friend or two or had a friend or two like that yeah. where no matter what you said or you said, Oh, I'm looking to do this. I don't know about that because if you do that, what if this happens? And it's always something negative. It's never, well, what if you do that and it works and you go yeah. up here? It's never that it's always this. Those are the people that you want to purge from your circle. Those are the people that you don't want to be around because they're going to keep you at a low vibe and you're not even going to know it. And drain your energy at the same time. Yeah. yeah they're energy suckers. 
you'll feel it. You'll be, it, it, you know how they say, you know, if somebody says, man, when I go out with this guy, man, it's exhausting yeah, hanging exhausting. out with this guy. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> exhausting, right? That, that's why. Because that negative energy is sucking you down into that same vortex <laughs> that that person is in. Yeah. And if you're living with someone like that, if you're living with somebody like that, now we're talking life and death. Yeah. Right. I mean, yes. am, I, I'm not, am I exaggerating? Not at all. You, okay. Because you download sickness and disease through your environment and through your own self-talk and how you are feeling. Because feeling, they say feeling is the secret. Mm -hmm. What does uh, Darth Vader say? He says, trust your feelings. You know it to be true. Mm -hmm. Like, you know it. To, I told Skylar that the other day. I'm like, there's a feeling that you get when you know something is kind of true already, but you're asking someone else to get the validation. To, then they say, yeah. And you're like, yeah. I go, Skylar, you already knew it was true. You already knew it. You, you already, just needed you just, that, yeah. that extra person to hammer it home for. It. How many times? I think we've all done this where we've been sitting there and you thought about, you know what, maybe you play the pick three, right? Or, or maybe, and maybe you don't, but maybe just that one day you're passing by that 7-Eleven and you're like, man, I should have, you know, I'm thinking about playing one, two, three today, you know, just, but you didn't do it. You know, even, you might have even pump gas and didn't do it, mm -hmm. but you thought about it. Right. And then you go home and you turn on the news and that's the number that came out. Yeah. And you're like, I just thought about this. Yeah. That's happened to all. Of, it happened to you yeah. when we were younger. Uh, uh, much younger. You remember you were playing. You were playing the lottery. T was, tell, tell the quick the story <laughs> about I, what happened. I dreamed I got an eighty-one on my chemistry test. I walked up to the wall. I went like this, and I had an eighty-one. The two days later, I went to school. I walked up to the wall. I had an eighty-one. It was wild. So I said, "Okay, I'm going to play zero eight one." I played zero eight one for a long time, for a long time, and the one day that I didn't play it, it came out. I cried. I had to call my dad. I said, why did this happen? He goes, that always happens. That mm -hmm. happens. You have to keep playing. It happened to our dad. The same stop. thing. Mark Houghton will tell you that it always happens. It happened to him. Like you have to same always. Thing. Then I said, you know what? I'm not going to play it. Whatever. It came out the next day, 108. It came out again. Again. Like, talk about being sick. Yeah. Was she sick was physically that. sick. I remember, I remember dad telling us that like he was, it was only $580 still, like, still, it was still like, and something that, you know, that, that's see, that's, that's worse than what happened to me with the lottery. Cause it had nothing to do with that. Cause I was playing the, the pick three anyway. Uh, when my kid was little, I would just be in Publix or whatever. And I would just play the pick three. And one day I had her and one of her friends with her and I said, Hey guys, why don't you guys play one number and I'll play one number. And I kept playing the same number. They ended up playing, I think, nine, two, three or something like that. Mm -hmm. The number came out, but it was the wrong drawing. So the yeah. number actually came in because if you don't check one of the boxes for which drawing, it defaults to like whatever the next one was or whatever. It was something like that. Yeah. So when I saw it on the website, I said, like, it came out, but it was the wrong drawing. So that was interesting. So and that's where they say God has this funny sense of humor. Yeah, that's exactly. where that comes from, right? Right. Because yeah. what are the odds, right? Come on. Like the, the kids were with me that day. They decide to play three numbers. Those three numbers come out, but it was the wrong drawing. <laughs> like, well, like we, we figure it out, right? So this is, this is why, you know, we, this topic is, I think it, this topic is so broad. It's, it is. It, and you could talk about it forever. But do we have control here? Do, yeah. Do you think so you do, have so, here? so so do we? Okay. So or are things out of your control? Yeah. Like are things? Can we influence? Because are things predestined? Be, right. Because that plays into, and this is not not to get religious, but this plays into a lot of people who believe that your like your outcome is predetermined, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that believe that that they believe that you know what that your life it is doesn't going matter to, what I do. It's right. already predetermined. It's already so predetermined. Why try? So, so why try? Right. It's right. just, you know what? Just live, you know, you, cause, cause, and then the argument is, right. Oh, I know people who've done nothing but good their whole life and, and bad things happen to them or they die young or something like that. Right. So they look at it like, man, this universe thing ain't working. Right. <laughs> they're, this ain't where it's not making any sense because they're looking at why are these people getting fortune and why are these people getting fortune and why are these people getting fortune? But all of these poor people over here who are doing nothing but the right thing. They're not getting any fortune. 
That's what makes people question all of this. Yeah. So what do you say to those people? Well, what I think is God is impartial. God, uh, universe, source energy, whatever makes people feel comfortable. Um, God is impartial and the universe is balanced. Um, everything has to balance out. Um, and you do have control here um, with your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. If you're thinking negative, some people don't know that, though. So mm. some people um, can have a lot of misfortune, and they could be a very nice person mm. or, not, or a nice people. And you're wondering, why do bad things keep happening to them? But what, are the, what is their thought process? Are they victim? Are they victim mindset? Are they um, bringing in negativity to them by always saying, you know, it's how we talk to ourselves. It's what you are saying. How is your self-talk? Victim mindset. That's the key piece that I picked up there. I think a lot of people will agree. We are really nurturing and fostering a victim mindset in this country. I, I've seen like yeah. this big push to make people believe that they're less than what they are, right? Like to get you to believe that. And I think that that's really having a big impact on youth and just people across the board who it's, it's like this because, and we talked about the mainstream media which is the reason we don't watch it is because it's mostly negative. It's, we were talking, we were joking about this. I remember. It makes you sick. I remember putting on, like, when you would put on the news at six o'clock when I was a kid, like, you would, they would show you pictures. They would show you firefighters rescuing cats out of trees and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they would show you nice things that you saw from people doing for each other around the neighborhood and things like that. It, yeah, they would tell you about the thing, the car crashes and stuff too, but they also put in positive things yeah. that were happening. The, the police officer who got the award or the military guy that came home, you know, and got and his and people were waiting on him at the airport. The dog is running at him. You know, th- you don't really see any of this stuff anymore. As far as I know. Now, again, I don't yeah. watch the mainstream. Maybe well, I'm wrong. It's to control your vibration. Um, we're vibrational beings. Everything. The law of vibration tells you that everything is moving, including us. Everything is oscillating. And your vibe is determined by how you are feeling, Mm. what are you putting out into the universe? Whatever you're putting out, you're sending out the signal. This is the way that I understand it. And you're bringing it back to you. So it all starts really up here. You have to change your mind first, you know, so that you can, and then the body will respond to the mind because your cells are listening. And you can't change your mind if you're consuming the same stuff all the time. And if you're toxic. If you're toxic, it's very hard for you to to control your mind, and you don't even know that you're toxic. Like a lot, most of us are. Most yeah. of us, uh, just about everybody is. The there's toxic stuff in the food. There's stuff in the water. There's stuff in the air. Whole topic. You're watching n- a negative, toxic TV. You have toxic friends, like, and you don't even probably know it. So you're sending out these signals, and you may be getting a mixed bag, a mixed kind of reality. Mm-hmm. Some th- some good things are happening. Some bad things are happening. But it all comes according to your vibration. Bring up the uh, vibrational scale. So, oh, oh, wait, we did that one. No, let's bring up the, um, actually, what we want to share. We'll segue into the, the laws. Bring them the laws. So we're going to do another screen share here. Because uh, if you know the laws, something they didn't teach us in school, um, they told us the law of gravity. I harped on that one. But there's a bunch of laws that they skipped that I had to find out on my own so that I could start to implement them in my life so that I could start to heal my body. So you um, should be seeing the uh, 12 laws of the universe on the screen. Hopefully, if not, we'll make it so. Um, but so we're going to read through these quickly. So the first one is the law of divine oneness. OK, everything and everyone is connected. That's something you always say all the time. We all you, come you, from you, the same place. I always wonder what she's talking <laughs> about. She's saying we're all connected. I'm like, what is she talking about? And it sounds woo woo, but it's really true. We all come from the same one place. That's we're all from there. So we're all connected. We're just branched off in different human bodies. So number two is something you hear people say all the time, but I don't think people actually, a lot of people who say it actually know what it means. Number two, law of vibration, good vibes only. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Yeah. You hear people say that. Good it vibes does. only. Oh, it saying, makes sense. Man, we're on the same wavelength. Yeah. They yeah, say yeah. it, but they're not. Like really putting it together. That's exactly what it means. Right. Law of number, uh, number three, law of correspondence. What you feel is what you see. Okay. 
Number four, law of attraction. You get what you focus on. That's one you talk about all the time. This the is the gentleman who uh, the gentleman who won the lotto, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure that that's one of the main things that, that, that he talks about because he literally he, he focused on it. Or actually, the lady we're going to tell you about towards the end of, the, of this particular program. I had no idea about this story, but she did this actually to a T. Like, and we'll and we'll we'll talk about that here in a bit. Uh, number five, law of inspired action. Law of inspired action. This one is really good because if you're action, when you take action upon a thing that you want to make something work, if you have to force it, if you have to really push, 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 you may get what you want, but you may also lose it very quickly. When you have inspired action, it's kind of like you get a download. You just get this, like a light bulb goes off. You have this idea. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, like when we started the podcast, that was like, mm -hmm. we have really great banter. We, we could have a great show. And I just left it like that. Yeah, and not, and it was funny because uh, real quickly on that, um, we 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 ended up starting this show because of the fact that we talked so much on the phone about this kind of stuff and just stuff going on in the world, and and we would find ourselves on the phone all the time. And then I, I'd go, you know, I go to the barbershop, get my hair cut, I'm, and I'm and I'm talking with those guys too, and I'm telling them all these things. And then one of them told me, "Man, you should start a podcast. Man, you you got enough material for a podcast." And then, you know, we started saying, why don't we just start our own podcast? I mean, why not? Right. We, why don't, why don't we go ahead and, and do this and see where it goes? If nothing and else, everything unfolded quite easily. So mm -hmm. nothing know. felt forced. It was all, uh, uh, it was all very, came through very smoothly. New issues here and there, but nothing major. Um, we're up to number six, which is the law of perpetual transmulsion of energy. Transmutation. Oh, transmutation. Your energy level can alter ones for the better or worse and vice versa. That, that kind of goes into what. That's interchanging. Yeah. That, that, that one. Vibrational uh, scale. Um, law of cause and effect uh, seven. is number seven, the direct relation between actions and events. Uh, number eight, law of compensating. You must contribute in some way towards your goal. It ain't just going to happen for you. Yeah. You got to, you got to really. You got to get off the couch. Yeah, it ain't just going to happen. You can't just pray, right, and say, I'm going to win the lotto. You got to go buy the ticket, too. <laughs> got to buy the ticket. Right? You got to believe. Yeah. yeah. Number nine, law of relativity, uh, appreciating what we have without needing to compare. Big, that's huge because that is what, that's the problem with social media. That's the problem with social media because they use comparison. Yeah. They love it. Comparison yeah. is the thief of joy. They get you on there so that you can compare yourself with others. And then you get off feeling very depressed because you don't look like her. Yeah. You don't have what he has. Yeah. There's a documentary that I saw uh, a little while ago. It was like, it wasn't an official documentary. It was something, it was actually a YouTube video that was kind of cut in a documentary form where they were interviewing young ladies who went through this comparison problem. Mm -hmm. These were beautiful young ladies, but they were so depressed because of their social media. Uh, they were constantly comparing themselves to their friends and their friends and their friends and their friends. And the, my last selfie got 400 more likes than this one. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Did I hold my nose the wrong way? Did I not powder my nose enough? Are my, are my eyes bloodshot? What's the pro The comparison got to the point where it was literally making the, these were it girls, young girl, it made them sick, like physically sick yeah. to where these girls were like obsessed and obsessed and obsessed with comparing. And, and they just talked about it right here. So I find that interesting. Uh, number 10, law of polarity. There are two sides to everything. That makes sense. Yep. 11 is law of rhythm. Our inner rhythm will speed up and slow down. Stop and listen carefully. When it listen inside you, it's where the strength begins. So this, <laughs> hey, listen, people, hey, my old heads out there know that song. Uh, 12 is law of gender. Oh, boy. There you go. That's a whole nother show. <laughs> That, 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 uh, yeah, that, that, uh, that well, it, it's here. That's a so. whole nother show. I, 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 uh, okay. So, so that's a whole nother show. We know that one. I mean, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um, so, so you do have control. So you we do have, have to control. control. If you can control your mind, you can control how you feel. Mm -hmm. And then if you can control how you feel, then you can send out the signal that you want to control the reality that you generate. So that actually leads to the last bullet point. So how do we save ourselves from self-destructive negative thoughts? So, okay. It takes practice. It takes work. Something bad happens. We want to go to the bar and get plastered, right? Okay. Like that, at least that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that's what happens to me. I'll be like, man, you know what? I'm going to call him up, but let's, man, let's go out. And, and that may lead us to do 
something self-destructive, right? Yeah. We may drink too much. We may eat too much. We may not sleep enough. Uh, we, it, we may be hung over the next day, which might bleed into the next day. And I've done that a lot. Like I've done that to myself where I've, I went out on a night that I shouldn't have. Like I knew I shouldn't have went out because I had something to do the next day. But my friends were like, come on, man, come on. We're out here having a good time. And peer pressure get, got me and I end up going out. And then what happens? All those things I said, I get a hangover. I got to get up the next day. Oh, I got a migraine I can't get rid of. Oh, and then I have to get on a meeting and then I have to host a meeting. So cascading effect. So then this lead, that leads me to this then. Everything is contingent on how you react to your 3D, mm-hmm. like how you react to what has happened. Because bad thing, even if you are working on yourself and you're meditating and you're praying and you're believing and you're, you know, you're really working on it, you're changing who you are. So this old reality is here. It has momentum. This old you, however you were, mm-hmm. but you're starting a new reality. I'm going to be this new person. So this momentum has to die off. So your new reality can, you will have some overlap, right? Because you have Mm -hmm. starting this and then eventually this will die off and you'll start having a better experience. Mm -hmm. But it takes time. It takes patience. It takes practice. Practice. And with awareness of a thing, you can change it. So you'll get better at hearing your negative self-talk. Hearing how you respond to things, hearing how you chop people down or or choose not to. The person that I used to be would, you know, talk crap about that person or get in the car and and whatever. It would be a negative experience. I've done that with my kid. Yeah. Uh, So I did that with my kid. Like, I I had to realize, like, it took her a while to start, like, letting me know because I coach my kid in sports, right? So I'm I'm harder on her than the rest of the team. And that's. Not really on purpose, but it's just kind of like how I am. Um, but it got to the point where she did and she was right. Like I and I and I actually told her she was right. Like she told me that I think we had a scrimmage game going on and she made a really nice play that led to a goal. And I I kind of I guess I kind of congratulated the rest of the team and not really her. And she's really the one who was responsible for making it happen. So in the car on the way home, she's like, You never tell me when I do anything good. And I thought about it and it kind of messed with me a little bit because I was like, you know what? I haven't really been doing that this season. I, I need to apply. I need to give you some positive reinforcement, right? In the past, I would have gotten to know, what are you talking about? I'm always in. But I was, I was like, no, she's right. Listen. She's right. Yeah. We, we sometimes will we'll go after that person. Because right? Right? you want to defend yourself. What do I you mean? Do I'm, always, I'm a great coach. A lot of people are very defensive yeah. and offensive very, very quickly instead of Slow down a little bit. Right. Don't take scores so soon. <laughs> if you, like, if you, again, if you're in a relationship with somebody, like it could be a friend, significant other, whatever. But I, I feel like if you can't talk to that person, like, if you can't sit down and have a conversation with that person about how you feel yeah. without them making you feel like crap about it, yeah. <laughs> like that, to me, that's a key thing. And this kind of bleeds over into relationships, but it's something I know now. But if you if you're not if you don't have a partner who's an open ear for you when you tell them, hey, I need to talk. I got something on my mind or or they can tell something's wrong. Hey, do you need to talk? That's the kind of person you want to have around you. That's the kind of person that you want to keep around. It could be a friend. It could be somebody who sees they see something's off in your demeanor. They see something's off in, in the way that you're you know, you're not the same mood or whatever. Yeah. Do you need to talk? Yeah. You got something. People, a lot of people just need to, they need to talk. They need to tell people how they feel without feeling or worrying about being judged, being judged. by yeah. what they're telling them. Because we're big, tough guys, right? Like men, we're not allowed to tell anybody how we feel, right? You should be able to tell your partner. If you can't tell anyone else, you should be able to tell your partner. If you can't tell your partner, it ain't your partner. Yeah. Well, yeah. get away from that partner. It's not your part. It's someone who you've made yourself believe is your partner. <laughs> you're, you're trying to convince yourself of that too. You're like, I, I think I love her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, uh, that's, that's one of the big things I learned uh, about a lot of this is, is just whether it's, it's people at work, it doesn't matter if it, yeah. it, whether it's the news you consume, doesn't matter. Like if the stuff you're listening to doesn't make you feel good, turn it off. And if you're choosing to change your reality, I want a new life. I want, I want to be a different person. I want to feel better. I want to look better. I want, 
I want more things and more better things to be coming into my life. If it is a signal to send out, then I want to learn this signal so that I can bring these things in. And so you're learning these uh, techniques and different ways to start to change who you are. Mm -hmm. There are going to be people in your life that want to only remember the person you used to be. Yeah. Well, you and deal with that a lot. I do. So. Even though you've, it's been years and you've yeah. changed and you continue to um, find ways to continue to become better. Some people cannot let go of the person you used to be because maybe it makes them feel better when you're not doing good or maybe it makes them feel better. But wait, when but let me stop you there. Could it be that when you were that person? You did something to that person that they still just can't seem to really forgive you for it, even though they know that you're oh, the, sure. They know you're a different person now. Yeah. But they're saying, but she only doing that because oh, she done changed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that yes. ain't she, she knows what she did. That, and that's part of the growth and that's part of the change. Cause there, if there is something that I did to you when I was an asshole and now that I'm, I'm a different person, let's talk about it because yeah. I, I would love to apologize. Yeah, because I know I was not the best person in my heyday. I mean, so guys, if there if that's going on in your life, it could be, you know, family member, friend, whatever. Like if that like because there a lot of us have made life changes. Right. And we may have maybe in our past lives or previous lives, a person we were before we did something to like you said, offend somebody or, hey, you know what? The way you are now, I know you're way more approachable than you were before. And if somebody comes to you with this, I don't see you snapping and biting their head off the way the old you would. You, what yeah. do you mean? And getting all defensive. And all that. I think at the minimum, you would listen. You would give that person the audience, allow them to tell you, why do you feel this way? What did I do? And then, and then I think from there, you should be able to, to bury the hatchet with that person. Absolutely. I think if you're dealing with two reasonable people, if you're dealing with somebody who just wants to to keep harping on who you used to be and beating you, let with, that person go. You know, it's like beating the dead horse. Then, yeah, let go. gotta let him go. Let let that person go because you're not going to be able to. You're like, okay, you know what? We agree to disagree. It is what it is, mm -hmm. and just leave it alone. Yeah. But um, so yeah, I mean, now that's going to segue us into. We've got a few minutes left, so we're going to leave on, which is actually a. This is a very interesting story. And I just found this out today. I had no idea who this, who this lady was, but you um, can create your own reality and you can, you can change things here with your mind and with your thoughts and with your beliefs. You got to believe it. So um, this lady here, um, her name is Cynthia Stafford. Okay. Yes. So I'm just going to read the headline. She knew she would win the 112 million. Dollar mega, uh, mega lottery. My sister knows a lot more about this woman. So tell us what she did in order to manifest this lottery win for herself. Basically, she wanted to win the lottery and she picked a number. She picked $112 million. So I'm going to win 100. She wrote it on a piece of paper. She put it under her pillow and she started uh, meditating, believing, praying, knowing that she was going to win this money. She spent time in visualization and meditation. And it was a daily thing. She even went so much. She believed so much that she was going to win. She got a financial advisor before she won and started talking to the financial advisor. All these things she was doing was signaling to the universe. I already know I won. I'm preparing for my, for my money. She cites law of attraction as part of it. Uh, in, and she won $112 million. So, so this woman literally, um, I mean that she won the exact amount, right? This is stuff you would see, like, remember on Unsolved Mysteries. On, uh, I don't know if people ever watched that show. I still watch the old shows of that. Great, great show. Uh, great, 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 great show. But this is one of those things when they would always do the unexplained. This would be on there. How did she dream up the $112 million? You can do it. Right? Looking back at those shows, those things we were seeing. You can do it. It makes sense now. Like, you now you can look back at it. This stuff, because you remember... You, I thought that show was like half fiction when I was a kid because I used to watch it with my dad and I was just scared of Robert Stack's voice. So I would watch it with my dad and be scared. Like it'd be dark in the room and I didn't want to move that far from my dad because I'm like, don't do not ding. I didn't want my dad to go to the bathroom. But I was scared. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I know some of y'all probably, you know, used to watch it too. The new ones. But I, but I love the old one. But it, but it, but these unexplained things. Maybe they're not unexplained. 
maybe they're actually very explainable, right? Yeah. And in, mm-hmm. in the end, because this would have been one of those things. How does she do this, right? You can do it here. You get, okay. Jesus said in the Bible, think upon things that are lovely and just and of good report. We are supposed to be thinking upon mm-hmm. lovely things mm-hmm. because if you, and, and they also said, you manifest, your words manifest themselves. Your words prophesy themselves. Mm-hmm. So speak upon things that are lovely, just a good report. Um, you can bring it in. You can bring it into your reality. We can do anything here. I believe that. I change my entire health with these concepts and with these, yeah. with these beliefs. Sure. Um, I was a dying person. And now I believe I, I'm a thriving person. I'm off all those medications. Um, I don't see those doctors anymore. It was a nightmare. And um, I had to change all his mind. All his mind. you, you got to get these concepts. Put it this way. Never in a million years did I think I'd be doing a podcast with my sister. If either one of my sisters, I would have seen me doing it with my younger sister. <laughs> Not this one. It was the worst. Not this one. My younger sister, I could see us. I could see us doing something and laughing together, right? I could, we'd yeah. probably be laughing the whole time. If I was doing it with Carmel, but it was bad. I never would have thought I'd be doing this with her. So if she didn't change and metamorphosize into the person that she is now, there's no way in the world we'd be able to do this. So um, it's quite a miracle in that way that we're doing this. Uh, we're both now, you know, we're in our we're in our forties. We're we're parents. Uh, we, you know, we so th- those things. Uh, we, you know, we've watched each other go through lots of phases of life and now it's like we're we're kind of like on the same phase finally like where things are going pretty good you know what something has to happen in your life you have to be squeezed you have to be compressed you have to be pushed into a space that you just can't take it anymore and i i got to a place when i turned 40 in the hospital Uh, by myself that one by myself and she called me and i'll be honest with y'all i didn't go up there my family had enough I'm going to be like, I think, I, <laughs> I think, honestly, I don't remember if I told you that or I just came, or I just came up with the excuse not to come, but she knew from the phone call that I wasn't coming. You guys had enough. We, we, we were done. We're like, no, every, it was like everybody in the family came to like wore down. epiphany at the same time. Like, yeah. oh, I mean, it's in the hospital. We're not going, but guess what? That ended up being the rock bottom that she needed. Yes, it was. That ended yes, up being was. the rock bottom that you needed. It was enough. I said, I am never coming here again. I'm going to figure this out. I am never coming back here. I haven't, I haven't been back. I'll be back. When you make a decision, and that's really all that it takes, is a decision. When you decide that mm-hmm. you've had enough, and everybody knows that feeling. Oh, when yeah. you've had enough of something and you say oh, yeah. never again, that moment when we it are clicks. treated the way we allow people to treat us. I use that one all the time. Absolutely. We're treated the way I don't let people treat me in the kind of way no more. Absolutely. You, you got to love yourself. So when you decide and every fiber in your being is with you, your cells are cheering you on. Yeah, we've had enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's when you change. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the moment that, and I'm sure like a lot of you listening, you've had that moment, you know, whether that's a job that you wanted to get away from and you finally got that second call back after that interview with that other company and you've been waiting to put in that two weeks notice, like that feeling that you have, yes, I'm done like that. Or, or like I said, maybe it's a, a spouse, a significant other, a sibling, something that you're, that you're breaking away from, right? Like breaking the chains of you know what I got, if I want to grow, I got to get away from this job or this person or this something that's holding me down. Uh, Crabbing a bucket syndrome. Yeah. That's grabbing a bucket syndrome. If you have people there that are trying to pull you back down that bucket, gotta let them you gotta go. get away from you. You got to shake your way out of there and you got to get up out of there and you just got to and, and be And don't be like Lot's wife. Don't look back. Yeah. And think about it like don't this, look back. because here's the thing. When you're on your grind and you're on your purpose, you're going to notice that the people that are doing that are going to fall off anyway. They're going to fall off anyway because yeah. you're not going to be doing the things that they're doing. They won't resonate. You won't resonate with them anymore. They're going to think, and then you're going to say, oh, they're going to start saying, oh, he changed or she changed. Yeah. She, she thinks she's better than you that. for changing. Yeah. And you're like, you're right. I did change. That's yeah. a good thing. Like, what if we all stay stagnant and stay doing the same thing? That's not the point. That's I, not didn't what work hard. To do. I didn't work this hard to stay the same. Absolutely. You should want to change. Yeah, you're damn right. I and changed. when you're making moves and you're and you're on your your purpose, you're going to find out. You're going to look around, and the people that are going to be around you are other people that are on their purpose. 
your and, vibe attracts your tribe. And next thing you know, you now like people say, oh, oh, now you're rubbing shoulders with this one or that one. That's how that happens, guys. That's precisely how it happens because you break away from the from all of this over here, all this negative whirlwind stuff that's going on over here. Mm-hmm. You break away from that, and next thing you know, man, I'm bumping into. And, and and I met this and and we got invited to this and then and then and then it spawns into another opportunity, and you start being around people who are they have more a new like reality. You. you have a new life, and new it reality. really happens. That's how it happens. So let's Quite close amazing. with that um that last uh, Joe Dispenza. Oh yes, the yes, yes. So we have one more slide to share with you um, before we wrap up tonight. This is, let's pull it up here. Oh, yeah. This is a good quote. Let me share this one. Uh, So we're going to share another slide with you. And go ahead and read this one to us. How you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. When you change your personality, you change your personal reality. Very insightful. I so this guy, um, your personality. This is interesting. Julia. This is the only guy that I the, love him. The material uh, that you sent me today to to, to I look learned up a for lot from Dr. Joe Dispenza. A lot of his teachings. You are the placebo, by the way. I heard his. I saw you him on on Impact Theory on uh, on a video, and I, I it came on in the background while I was doing something. I think I was cleaning bedroom or something, and it just happened to come on in an autoplay, and I couldn't turn it off. Cause I was just listening to this guy and he was, and then I sent the link to her. She's like, Oh, I know about this guy. He's, I watch this guy all the time. And I was like, you wow. Your so, foundation in my healing. Yeah. So this guy, if heavyweight dude, I, just, I've only heard that one video, but in that one video, I was like, wow. I mean, it was enough for me to send it to you. Cause and I was I, like, it was, yes. it was really, really <laughs> like really good to listen to like some of the stuff and it, the stuff you were saying makes it made a lot of sense yeah. it, it made a lot of sense we're very powerful they hide our power from us talked about probabilities like one thing i learned like um uh, if, if you're speaking negativity into the uh into the universe like if you're saying things like oh I'm a, th- this is not gonna happen or that you just increase your chances of that happen i think he said it was 27 percent or whatever you're speaking out you just increased your chances of that specific thing occurring to you just by you saying it Mm -hmm. you may think it's nothing words are very powerful it's very very powerful you people say words have weight right this is what it kind of ties back to you'll seriously start hearing yourself more when you say don't be frivolous with your words especially when you're referring to yourself Mm -hmm. don't Mm -hmm. you dare (laughs) you matter yeah and you're prophesying the future that's hilarious so we just got notification that our battery is dying on our camera. Uh-uh. So we're going to wrap up. We're up against it anyway. Um, we, we were able to cover everything that we wanted to cover tonight on this particular topic. This is a deep topic, too. So we let may... us know what you guys think in the comments, because um, we can touch on this some more, you know, because we all want more control here. We all yeah. want to live a life by design rather than by the default programs that they're pumping out through the tell lie vision. Oh, yeah. They do, they do a whole show on that, too. But mm-hmm. Uh, so let us know, uh, let us know in the comments, uh, you know, let us know what you feel about this stuff. I think this subject will resonate with a lot of people. I think that, um, you know, we may come back and do a part two to this one as well. Uh, we, uh, so I, I think it's a pretty broad topic. I think that there's, and I think enough people have discovered this within the last we two years. We can touch on it again when we uh, talk about health and fitness. Yeah. Because it it works there too. Yeah. Works in all of it. Absolutely. So we're going to wrap it up there, folks. Um, next week, we have another show coming. Again, like I said, we're going to be pumping at least one show. We're going to get to the point with about two a week. Uh, right now, at least one uh, every week. And next week is going to be how badly do you want it? And this is about your goals for 2022 and beyond. That's going to be the next show that's going to come up uh, next week. So um, we thank you for joining us. Like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Good night. <laughs>